So this mentoring session will be about half an hour long. Um, we will cover, um, since uh, a lot of people asked um, an introduction to programming with Qiskit, um, we have uh, basically taken the uh, some content from QBrowse and some content from uh, Qunico, uh, which uh, we will both have this uh, for in this program. And we will go over the very basics of Qiskit. For those of you uh, who are not or still getting familiarized, let's say with the uh, with the package. And of course, if you have any questions, because uh, I have to switch tabs to to see the chat. So if you have a question, just feel free to stop me. Just unmute yourself. Stop me. Ask your question. Um, it's supposed to be an interactive session. Hi, are you gonna send us this link, like the link to the recording after this? Ah, yes. Uh, this this session, yes, it's recorded, and uh, I don't know when Womanium will uh, provide you with the link. Um, usually, it takes about twenty four hours. I mean, as long as the, uh, as soon as they get it from Zoom, they will share it. But for this particular session, uh, I will have to check with uh, with the Womanium team. And the other thing is that this this particular notebook. For now, we're just going to just read through it. Um, yeah, hello. So um, yeah, for this notebook, we're just going to read uh, through it. Just explain the basics, and everything will be shared. This very notebook with uh, probably uh, um, solutions. We will add some solutions because we did include some tasks. Well, uh, tasks were already there in Qbrowns and Qunic to start with. Um, let me see how many people are here, about 20 people. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, we're six minutes uh, past the top of the hour. I guess we can, we can start. So as they said, this would be an introduction to Qiskit, uh, by far the most popular um, package or SDK for quantum programming. So to install Qiskit, I imagine most of you have installed it. But if you don't have it, inside of Jupyter Notebook, it's uh, Exclamation mark, pip install, Qiskit should do it for you. And if you execute this, I have Qiskit already installed in, in my case, and it should install Qiskit. So once you've installed it, you can check that you actually, um, the, the, the installation went successfully, just import Qiskit. And uh, you can execute this Qiskit dot uh, underscore underscore Qiskit version. And this will give you the version of all the Qiskit components, including the main, let's say, Qiskit um, package, which is here. So in this case, I have the uh, 0 0.43.2, which I believe is the latest version. Sometimes people will have issues executing codes from modern notebooks. Usually it, come, it, it's, it comes from the fact that they don't have the correct version of Qiskit. So the very first thing that we need to do when we start programming any quantum computer is to define um, our quantum, um, quantum circuit. So our quantum circuit will consist of qubits and classical bits. Now qubits we use for computation. And then once we're done doing quantum computation, the measurement results will be classical bits. As you know, a qubit can be in superposition of 0 and 1. But once we measure it, it will be either be a zero or one. So this is a classical bit. And in, to do this in Qiskit, you can either define your uh, qubits or your qubit register. So a qubit register is just a collection of many qubits. Okay? If you have two, three, four qubits, for example, in this case, this is a qubit register of four qubits. And the way to do it is you import first from Qiskit, you import the quantum register. And you create a quantum register here. It's QReg is equal to quantum register. You you can add uh, you can name your, your quantum register. Maybe you want to reference it later. Uh, here you just named it qubit, and you input the size of your quantum register. That is how many qubits do you have, and you just execute. Um, of course, you can, as I said, you can give any name to your quantum register. I'm, I'm creating another quantum register here, which has only one qubit and named it Q. Okay, it executes just fine. Now for the measurement part, once we're done doing computation, we can move um, 
the results, the measurement results into a classical register. So this gets uh, transferred to a classical computer and now you're, you can start uh, interpreting the computational result of your quantum circuit. So these are the two main components of a quantum circuit. For computation, for quantum computation, and then classical register, uh, classical bits for uh, to store measurement results. So, does anyone have any questions so far um, related to this structure of um, quantum circuits? Um, can you can you please repeat? I couldn't quite hear you. What is the quantum disk? Can you please tell us a little bit? Um, what is the quantum? Your voice is a bit too low. If you could just get closer to the mic, please. What is the quantum register? Can you tell us a little bit about it? Oh, you're asking about the quantum register? Yes. Okay, so it's just a collection of qubits. Um, so in this case, we have four qubits. And th this, we call this collection of four qubits a register. And the same thing with classical bits. If you have n classical bits, then this would be uh, a classical um, bits register. So it's just a name, basically, just to tell you that you're, you're considering this, these uh, four qubits or these four uh, classical bits as part of uh, something bigger, let's say. And um, actually, we will draw the circuit, and you will exactly see the registers. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Can, can you? Uh, I was just a second late. Can you uh, restate which notebook we're looking at? Oh yes. Um, so this is um, a notebook. Uh, it's a merge between uh, some Q bronze material and some Q nickel material. Um, which are, which are courses by QWorld. And at the end of the session, which, which is recorded, you will get the recordings and we will also get, you will also get this very notebook. So it's, uh, this session will be just 30 minutes long, so we won't be able to uh, look in, in great detail at every part of the notebook, but I will just give you the basics, basics of Qiskit, basics of quantum programming, and then we, you will have this, uh, this notebook at the end of the session. And yeah, since you said, yeah, you, you just came in a bit late, so I will just repeat. If you don't have uh, Qiskit installed inside of a Jupyter notebook in a cell, just exclamation mark, pip install Qiskit, install these two L's. And this should install Qiskit. So I already have Qiskit installed, you import Qiskit, and then you can check for your Qiskit version uh, by executing this command, Qiskit dot underscore underscore Qiskit version. This gives you the uh, version for all of the Qiskit parts or inside of the Qiskit package, but one of the most, or the most important version to look for is this one. Where it says Qiskit is, uh, the one I have is 0 0.43. So if you're having issues executing someone else's notebook or someone else's code that's using Qiskit, that's the first thing you want to check, whether you have the, you have the last version or not. And as I was explaining, you start uh, defining your quantum circuit by defining two things, your qubits, and your bits, so quantum bits, classical bits. Quantum bits, you define them as a quantum register, that is a collection of quantum bits. Here I have four quantum bits, and I can just name the bunch of four quantum bits by any name I want here, just name them qubits. Uh, here's, a, here's another one, uh, another quantum register, which has only one qubit. And once we are done doing quantum computation, we move on to classic, uh, to uh, the, let's say, interpretation of our results, but we need to store our results somewhere. A qubit can have uh, a value which is a superposition between zero and one, but once you measure it, it's either zero or one. So it's a classical bit and you store it somewhere and that somewhere is the classical register. So generally you want to have as much, uh, uh, at, let's say at most you need as much classical bits uh, as you have qubits, but sometimes you have you don't want to measure all of the qubits. Sometimes you just want to measure one qubit. So you, you may get away with uh, less classical bits than quantum bits. But that's that's just a choice. If you if you want to be safe, just just create as many classical bits as you have of as you have qubits, basically. 
And yeah, so this is the first part. This is how to just initialize your quantum circuit. Now, if you, there is a, a shortcut, let's say, you can create a quantum circuit just directly by calling this quantum circuit class. Now I remind you, everything was imported here from Qiskit. We have imported the quantum register, the classical register, and now we're importing also the quantum register. So to start or to um, to start coding in, in Qiskit, you need to define a quantum circuit. Now what you can do is that you can create a quantum circuit, give it uh, a quantum register that you have created beforehand, a classical register, a name if you want, and that would be your circuit. Um, the other way um, to, uh, to to actually uh, create a circuit, we will, I will skip through these. Uh, these are just uh, some technicalities. For example, if you have uh, one quantum register which has uh, four qubits, another one which has one qubit. So you, you can just add them here together and your quantum circuit will have five qubits basically. Or you can also choose not to create um, classical classical bits. So you'll have only qubits, but in this case, you won't be able to make any measurements because you won't have you won't have anywhere to to store your uh, your measurements results. Alternatively, this is a most maybe common method. If you want to start a quantum circuit and you don't want to uh, uh, to worry about all of these steps, just do some circuit is equal to quantum circuit. Uh, the first number here is the number of qubits. Second number here is the number of classical bits. And that's it. And now let's actually draw one of the circuits. And just do circuit.draw. And uh, you can change the output here. The output can be either text, MPL, or LaTeX. So MPL refers to matplotlib when it basically draws an image. Text will just uh, uh, draw the circuit uh, with uh, with ASCII characters as, as text basically, and here we see the, the registers that we have created. So in in our circuit, the one we have drawn, we had joined two uh, two quantum registers. So the first register, remember here we called it qubits. It has four qubits, and they show up here with the appropriate name, and then one other register with just Q, and then we had four bits. So uh, this sign here, where you have a double line and then uh, it's it's uh, uh, with a strike, this means that we have uh, more than just one wire. Basically, we have four in this case, and it tells you the size. Uh, we can also draw maybe a simpler circuit, the one that we have created uh, by uh, the, by inputting three and three. So here, MPL, or sorry. It was called circuit four. Yeah. Here we just created a circuit with three qubits and three classical bits, and this, this is how it shows up. So this draw function is, uh, is very useful to check your circuit. Um, and this is how you initialize your circuit. Basically, you state how many qubits you want and how many classical bits you want, and that's it. Now we can move on to making um, quantum computation. Now, quantum computation is performed using uh, quantum gates. So, and some examples here are given for quantum gates. You have the NOT gate, so which turns a one into a zero, zero into a one. You have the Z gate, which uh, turns the zero ket to zero and the one ket into a minus one. The Hadamard gate, which creates superposition. Uh, the controlled NOT gate, which applies a NOT gate on the second qubit if this one is in the state one. Control Z, which applies the Z gate when the first um, control qubit is one. The swap, which just swaps the, the, the quantum states of two qubits. And uh, we can get even more complicated uh, um, uh, quantum gates. For example, here it's a control, control not, or it's also called the Toffoli gate, where both of these two qubits need to be one so that we can apply an X on, on the on the last qubit, and let's visualize all of these circuit, uh, all of these gates here. We have applied the NOT gate. So once you define your circuit, just do circuit dot x, and then um, put here the qubit that uh, uh, on which you want to apply the the, uh, the NOT gate. Uh, a better way maybe to do it is um, let's create another cell here just to uh, just to show. Sorry. Let's define a new circuit as 
quantum circuit. And let's say it has two qubits and we want to do uh, and to store everything, so two uh, classical bits. What you can do is just do circuit.x and I want to apply a not gate on the first qubit, so I input the index zero. And if I draw circuit.draw, I will see that a not gate has been applied to the first qubit. Uh, if I want a y, I just put y there. If I want a z, same thing. Uh, if I want a two qubit gate, which is, which is a gate that involves two qubits, as the name imply, for example, the control knot, then I would have to specify the control qubit and the target qubit. So this is now a C knot. So now what, what the circuit will do is it will apply an X gate or not gate on the second qubit if the first qubit is in the state one. If it's in the state zero, then nothing happens. So this is how to apply quantum gates. Oops, sorry. This is how to apply quantum gates um, in, 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 uh, in Qiskit. So I'll summarize very briefly. Circuits are created either using quantum classical registers or directly by using this quantum circuit, um, uh, this quantum circuit class. Once you have created your circuit, you can start applying some operations. And you do that just by um, calling your circuit dot and then some gate. And here you put the, uh, the qubits or the indices of the qubits on which you want to apply your, your, your quantum gate. Okay, I'll just turn off my cell phone. So any questions so far? We just have covered how to create a quantum circuit and how to apply um, quantum gates. Let me just quickly check the chat if there is anything there. Um, uh, so, Khadija, you can ask questions during the session. Just unmute yourself and yeah, in interrupt me if you want. Um, is it okay if I ask you a question now? Yeah, 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 yeah sure. Um, it's actually a very basic doubt. Uh, I've been facing during the installation of Quizkit. Uh, could you repeat? You have an issue with installing Quizkit? Uh, yeah, yeah. I have completed all the steps, but right towards the end, I am facing an error which says that I cannot install packages due to an OS error, Win error 5, because it says that I don't have the required permissions for installing Priskit. Oh, um, what you could try is um, in here, you, you do pip install Kiskit. And then you add dash dash user. This will allow um, pip to install Qiskit using admin privileges. And maybe this will solve your issue. I don't know if you have tried this dash dash uh, user before. Uh, no, I haven't. I yeah, so you, you could try this and see if this solves your problem. If it doesn't, just uh, send me a DM on Discord. On, or yes, you can find me in the the list of participants in the Womanium server. Okay, okay, thank you. Okay, you're welcome. I have a question. Yep. Uh, how do quantum gates work? Like the classical gates work by the help of uh, implementing the transistors. How do quantum gate works? Because there well, is some quantum mechanical principle for the implementation. Yes, now the, uh, as you said, in, in classical computing, Quantum gates are applied, uh, or uh, sorry, classical gates are applied um, by using uh, transistor logic. Now, for quantum com in quantum computing, unlike classical computing, we do not have a single technology for qubits. Okay, we have actually many platforms for qubits. So, we, an atom can be a qubit. Uh, an ion, which is an atom with uh, with, with uh, one less electron is, is a qubit. Um, a photon can be a qubit. Uh, a single electron can be a qubit. Or, or in the case of, uh, of IBM, for example, we have superconducting circuits where you have, an, have some circuit at very low temperature and it can be a qubit. So the quantum gates, um, the application of quantum gates depend on which type of qubit do you have. For example, let's take an atom. We can say that an atom 
in its ground state, that means where all of the electrons are in the uh, are in the lowest energy state, can be can represent a zero. And then if we take the uh, one of the valence electrons, then we just um, add some energy to it, so it becomes excited, and we, we we define this as a one state. So in this particular case, the way to apply quantum uh, gates is by basically shining a laser on 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 your atom for a certain period of time uh, for for the IBM case where they have a quantum circuit uh, where they have a, a, an electronic circuit at very low temperature a superconducting circuit uh, you would apply quantum gates by um, um, by applying microwave radiation on, on your qubit so it's all about it, it, basically, the, the, the qubits, um, they are all different for, for the moment. We, don't, we still don't know which technology will, uh, will be the best on the long term. So as long as we have multiple technologies for creating qubits, we will have many methods for applying quantum gates. And the methods, as I said, depend um, on the uh, nature of your qubits. Could be your, your, your quantum gates could be a laser, could be some microwave radiation, uh, and so on. And I believe uh, I don't I don't know th 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 there might be uh, th there might be a session in this womanium's program uh, about uh, these uh, uh, the different implementations of uh, of of quant of qubits. Um, let me again check the chat. Um, Ah, why we had written output when initializing circuit two? Yes, so in circuit two, um, okay, let me see. Ah, yes, here. So output we have defined it here. It's it's just the name, you know the the person who wrote this line of code just called their quantum register as output. So they just put put their quantum register here to say that it's part of the quantum circuit. Um, okay, so let's move on now to the to the next uh, to the next step. We have a task. So here we can um, we can try to solve this task. Now it says we need to create a quantum circuit with ten qubits. Apply the Hadamard gate to the first qubit, so qubit zero and apply nine C knots. I'm going to simplify the problem. Uh, I'm, we're, we're just going to do two qubits. So we're going to apply H on the first qubit and a C knot on, on both. So uh, I will ask you right now, uh, how, how would you go about doing this? Le knowing what we have learned uh, so far. So what's the first step? I just imported Qiskit. What, what do I need to do? Initialize the quantum circuit. Yeah, exactly. So we can just create a circuit, and we initialize it. We have many ways. Either separate by separating the classical registers and quantum uh, the uh, the quantum registers, or which is my favorite way, and mostly you will do this. Just create a quantum circuit. So now I said that in the task or in the modified task that I'm we're doing here, we're just going to uh, do computation on two qubits. So, what should I write inside of these uh, parentheses here? So, quantum circuit, parentheses, and then what? The number of 10 qubits in the class we write in qubits. Yeah, so it's the number of qubits. And this could be enough, but generally you will also want to measure your qubits. Uh, if you do computation and you don't get the result, I mean, why well, have you done the computation? So. Um, we just go also going to ask a certain number of classical bits. So we have two qubits, that means we will get two results. So we will need two classical bits. Right, so now we have the quantum circuit. Uh, the task says apply the Hadamard gate on qubit zero. So does anyone remember how to do this? Ah, yes, okay, uh, sorry, I missed the chat. Uh, yep, yeah, it's circuit, circuit.h, 
But remember to specify the qubit on which you want to uh, apply your your uh, your quantum gate. So it's the Hadamard gate, yes? And we want to apply it on cube, the first qubit, which is qubit zero. Then the next step, let's apply a C naught between first qubit and the second qubit. So the first qubit will be the target. It will not be affected by the, or let's say the, the C naught will depend on the state of the target. And then the, uh, sorry, not the target, the control. And then the not gate will be applied on the control. And I see, yes, uh, Rehab here says, yes, CX01. So just like for the Hadamard gate, we do circuit dot and now CX. And now we specify two indices since uh, control not acts on two qubits. So the control is the zeroth qubit, and the, uh, the second qubit is, is our target. And here we can just stop right right here and just draw our circuit. So circuit that draw, remember. Oops. So if I just do circuit that draw by default, it will draw the circuit as a text. You can see here this is a text. I can just select part of it, and we can see that you have indeed successfully applied H and C now. If I want Kiskit to draw the circuit as an image, I can use the uh, matplotlet, so uh, MPL. I just insert MPL there. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, LaTeX will also give a LaTeX output. But here, so it's, it's, it looks a bit nicer. So what Kiskit did here is that uh, it, it basically wrote the circuit in a LaTeX uh, in later code, and then it compiled it into an image. So now this is an image. So these are your three options, um, text, MPL, or LaTeX. OK, now uh, I will let you figure out how to apply nine C nodes and how to modify this to create uh, 10 qubits. So this part is optional here. Uh, because okay, we can use quant all the quantum gates in in, in, in this um, in in this uh, manner, but we can also do do some more complicated things like add controls. We, we've seen control not we didn't see control Hadamard. Um, this is the way to do it. Uh, you can read this notebook later since we're time limited uh, for this session. Yeah, you can read this uh, again. As I said, this whole notebook is based on uh, Cuban material and Cunicle material. So you can find all of this in both. But we will provide you with this, with this very specific uh, notebook and the solutions to the tasks. Um, let me just go back here. Any other questions about this part? So now what we have learned to do is how to create a quantum circuit, how to apply gates. So two steps. Any question on, on, on this? I'm not seeing any questions in the chat. Um, right, so I want you to look at this circuit here. So we have some qubits, we have some classical bits. We have done some operation or some 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 quantum program, let's say, uh, on these two qubits. Uh, at the end, we want to know what the result is. So we need to measure. So I will go. Uh, to this section. Now the circuit did not run yet, okay? We just defined it and um, we, we did not we did not execute it. So it's, imagine if you have a, a classical program like this code here, it's written, but I, I didn't hit enter yet. When, when I hit enter, then it will get executed. So let me just append this with a draw so we can see what this circuit does. So I hit enter and it, it, it drew the circuit. So the circuit now is uh, just a simple Hadamard. And then we have added this measure function here or measure method. Now what this measure method does is that it tells Kiskit once you're done applying your operations, here we have a single operation, Hadamard. Let me maybe just use MPL because it looks nicer. So we have applied Hadamard. And now 
we want to measure the result of this uh, of this computation. So here you you circuit dot measure, and then uh, you input the quantum register you want to measure and where you want to store your um, your your your, your quantum measurements. So we have started in this case by defining quantum register and the classical register, both having two qubits and two classical bits. We defined our quantum circuit, we applied Hadamard, and then we told Kiske to measure. And then just we have just drawn now the circuit. Now this is our complete circuit. We know that Kis Kiskit or the quantum computer actually will perform quantum computation and then measure. Now we need to execute. The, the circuit. And to execute the circuit, uh, Qiskit has uh, some um, simulators that are programmed, um, I think Python and or C++, I, um, in, uh, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not really sure. I imagine C++ for backend, but anyway. So once you define your circuit, so your circuit is the equivalent of your program, just like this code here. And now this code will get sent to my CPU and gets executed. So now we're telling Qiskit, Take this code, send it to some quantum um, device or some simulator for a quantum device and execute. Now we need to import two things. We need to import this uh, execute function and uh, this uh, AR um, uh, object from Qiskit. Now this uh, air will, uh, will allow us to have um, access to some quantum simula uh, simulators. So the way to do this is first to define the simulator. We're defining, um, uh, you know, w where this program, the quantum program is going to be executed. It could be a real quantum device, but here it's a, it's a simulator. So from air we do dot get backend, and then we um, enter the name of the backend. In this case, we're going to use something called the Quasm simulator, and you enter it just like this. You could just copy this and use it in your codes. And then we execute our circuit. So this is a circuit we have created earlier. We tell the execute function where to execute it. And since, as you know, qubits, they live in superposition, they have certain probability of being one or zero when we measure. So to get this probability, we need to measure a lot of times and then average maybe. So here we're measuring a thousand times. So execute, the structure of this, um, of this function is it takes a circuit, it takes a backend, which is the simulator and the number of shots. And then it returns something called the job. And then from job, we enter the results and we get the counts. And now you'll see what, the, what these look like. Um, the counts uh, just basically tell us the measurement results. Remember that here we have two qubits, so we will get um, two bits as a, as a measurement. So we got, Zero, 0, about half the time, and zero, 1, about half the time. Now, the first zero, in Qiskit, it refers to this, uh, uh, this bottom qubit. So, so it, you read from bottom to top here. So the first zero is this one. It was measured zero every single time, which is logical because it starts at zero, and we never did anything on it, just measured it. The first, the upper qubit, however, we have applied the Hadamard gate, which puts it in a superposition between zero and one, an equal superposition. So we, we expect to find zero half the time and one half the time. And this is exactly what you found here. So zero about half the time, and then one about half the time. And basically this is how you do quantum computation using Qiskit. So any questions, uh, how, many, how much time do I have left? I don't, yeah. Um, eight minutes uh, over time. So the uh, this is the execution part. Once you have created your quantum circuit and defined where you want to measure and draw maybe drawn your circuit, this is the basically the, the three lines of code you want to execute to actually simulate your quantum circuit. Get your backend, execute it, get your results. So any questions on this? And let me again see the chat because I missed a lot of messages, I think. Um, uh, so we are measuring both zero and one bit. Um, I'm not sure what you're referring exactly to zero uh, and one bit, 
Um, but okay, there are two cases. Either you're you're uh, referring to the values, and in which case, yes, the the measurement result will either be a zero or one. Or if you're referring to this uh, particular circuit, then yes, we are measuring um, this uh, qubit with index zero and this qubit with index one, and we are doing so uh, actually here. So this quantum register, remember, it contains two qubits. Classical register contains two qubits. So we are measuring everything. Uh, the next question: What is error? Error is uh, yes. It's a, it. It basically provides you with a bunch of simulators. Um, the note, this notebook will be published right after this uh, the, this session. So uh, we will publish this notebook. You can find the same material in keywords uh, QBronze and QNICL. And this is the starting point of QBronze and QNICL if you want to, um, to, to do the, uh, the both of these modules in, in this Womanium's program. Uh, you need to know about these things. So if you know how to initialize a circuit, apply some quantum gates, and the measure, you're all set. All right, so these are all the questions uh, in, in the task. Um, in, in the chat, sorry. Um, if you want, you can also, as I said, unmute yourself and maybe ask questions. Yeah, so in the meanwhile, I'll just summarize. Install Qiskit, check your version, um, create your quantum circuit in one of these ways, just pick, pick one, whichever one you like personally like this one, and then start applying some quantum gates, circuit dot, whatever quantum gate, and then uh, as an argument, you pass the qubits on which you want to uh, apply the uh, quantum gates. You may want to draw your circuit just to check that you have indeed programmed your quantum circuit the way you want it to program it. Then don't forget to, uh, let me go all the way down here. Don't forget to measure. Because again, uh, it doesn't matter how fancy your quantum circuit is. If you don't measure it, you, you won't know what happened. So you measure. And that's the last step of any quantum circuit. Um, once you measure, now you, you, your circuit here contains all the information about the, your quantum program, the number of qubits, the, the quantum program, let's say, and then where to measure and what to measure. Then just import some simulator, uh, execute the job for how many times you like here, just chosen a thousand, and then get your results. So this execute will return a job from job, just dot results, get counts, and uh, you need to tell the, the job that you want the counts for this particular circuit, and you can just print the result like this. This is the structure of basically every single quantum circuit in Qiskit. Um, now, I will just quickly go through the other sections uh, in this notebook. Let me just go back to the section I skipped. Yes, more about quantum gates. Um, you can read this. As I said, uh, you can, we have seen the controlled knot where the knot gate is applied depending on the value of the uh, control qubit. You can do the same for the Hadamard. You can do the same for any other um, uh, for any other uh, quantum gate. You can define your own quantum gates like this. For example, here we've taken the the, the not gate and we raised the not gate the not gate to the power of one half, which would create a square root of x. And you can read this. Uh, I mean, you can skip it if you want to uh, uh, to maybe. <laughs> Uh, first, do Q bronze and Q nickel, but you, you will have to do these uh, to not to know these to 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 program some more complicated quantum circuits. Uh, you can also do these tasks. They're they 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 are quite simple. They're just there uh, for you to practice. As I said, okay, you, you need to measure and then run your circuit. Now, what's left in this uh, notebook, and we will not have the time to cover them in this session. Um, you. You can also see um, the, what we call the state representation of your of your uh, quantum circuit. 
So um, as you remember from from QBrowse or the first uh, lectures by uh, by Gibran, um, the, any quantum state is is represented as a vector, and and Qiskit actually allows you to see the quantum state of your all of your qubits basically. So in this case, we have uh, we have two uh, we, we have two qubits. Yes, we have two. We have two qubits, so we will get um, uh, basically a two-dimensional vector. Uh, sorry, uh, two by two, because we need two, two dimensions for one qubit, two dimensions for the other qubit, and then two times two is four. So you can read this uh, at your ease later. Um, the any quantum circuit, any quantum gate, since our qubits can be represented as vectors. Now, mathematically, what we can do with vectors is that we can um, change them by multiplying um, them by matrices. So if our qubits are represented by a vector, then our quantum circuit is a matrix. And if you want to see what, what's the matrix of your uh, quantum gate, you can, you can just use this two matrix uh, method. You can also, also do the same for your whole for your whole circuit. So this, for example, here is the matrix for uh, for our whole circuit. In this case, it only contains a, a Hadamard gate. This is an important point. This is the reading order. So I will go back to this circuit here. The way to read these results is that the very first bit here corresponds to the bottom um, qubit in the circuit. This is the way uh, Qiskit, Qiskit works. And you can reverse it in, in the code, but by default, this is how it works. So this first zero refers to this one. And this second zero, oops, sorry, the second zero here refers to the, to the topmost qubit. Yeah, now um, as a final point, uh, Qiskit code isn't actually what gets executed on a real quantum uh, computer. What Qiskit will do is that it will take your Qiskit code and convert it into, let's say, machine language for quantum computers. And this language is called uh, Quasm. And it's, it's, we can actually see it here. So. In Qiskit, here's a, here's a circuit where we have just one qubit and we apply a NOT gate and then we measure. So it looks like this, it's in Python. But what gets sent to IBM is this. So without Qiskit, we would have to program in this way. Um, right. Now, uh, let me just read uh, the chat. It's uh, 47 already. Uh, how can we reverse the ordering? I believe it's in counts. Let me just quickly do a Google search for you. Uh, reverse, cascade, bits. I always forget. Yes, it's in the quantum circuit, I think. Or rather, no. Sorry. Uh, yes, it's in it, it's in the drawing. It's in the drawing. So let me go back uh, to this one. And if I do, yes, reverse bits equals true. So now we're applying the Hadamard on, on the bottommost qubit. If I, if I remove this, now I, I, H is, is on the top is on top. But this is just visual. It's not actually inverting anything. Uh, go back to Zoom. Uh, how do we do rotations in block sphere to change basis? Well, uh, rotations are, are, again, quantum gates. So if we go to any of these circuits, uh, let's say this one, um, rotations. You can do rotation gates by uh, calling this Rx or R, R, Y or R, RZ. 
So let's say we're going to apply an X, a rotation of the X axis for the zeroth qubit, and we give it some angle there. Uh, oops, sorry, it's the other way around. Okay. So you start with the angle. Yeah, so you start with the angle of rotation and then you specify the qubit on which you want to act. So this this is R, this Rx gate is a rotation on the X axis in the block sphere. Um, you can have an Rz and you can have an Ry also. Uh, is learning quasim beneficial or important? Um, I don't think it's that important. It's surely beneficial because you want to know what the quantum devices are actually executing. That's not necessary. This is why we have Qiskit. Um, the visualization techniques for counts, um, I mean, there are um, some visualization uh, modules inside of Qiskit. Um, oh, oh, actually, this is, uh, sorry, yes, this is, okay, this is a direct message. So there are, there are some um, uh, visualization techniques in, in Qiskit. Um, which we will not cover for now. We're already uh, uh, very, very late. Uh, in Qiskit, uh, zero is Z axis, right? Um, okay, I don't get this last question um, about the zero being the, the Z axis. Uh, if you're referring to this, the axis is, is, is encoded here. So it's our X, so this, this is the rotation of the X axis. Our Y is a rotation around the Y axis, and our Z is a rotation around the Z axis. This is the angle. So, I don't know, 0 0.5 radian. And zero here refers to the qubit on which you want to apply your rotation. So zero here refers to the first qubit. If I want to apply a rotation instead on the second qubit, then I can uh, input one here, and you can see that the RZ is now applied on, on this one. Okay, so uh, it's already, uh, yeah, we already spent around 15 minutes in this session. Uh, as I said, this session is recorded, so you should probably get the recordings later. Uh, this notebook will be shared with you, and all of the content can also be found in QBrowns and the QNICOL notebooks, uh, which you have access on Canvas. Um, we will have another session, uh, a mentoring session like this one later uh, and next week maybe, or um, I, I'm not sure exactly about the schedule, but if you want to see something covered, um, you can, uh, you know, post something on Discord and uh, so we can prepare something for you. Yeah, just uh, remember last time for you. Uh, thank you very much for this. I've joined a little bit late, but uh, I'm sure NASA did it in the best way possible. Uh, so this is just to remind you that uh, you can continue asking your questions on Discord, and uh, we will do our best to answer all of them uh, as they uh, come up. Uh, but uh, also, uh, if you want us to cover any specific uh, topic in the next uh, tutorial sessions, please let us know. It would be uh, great for us to uh, to, to cover things that you really need. So uh, yeah, we will have the next sessions and uh, depending on the other sessions uh, by the other colleagues uh, who are monitoring uh, most of you during this program, we will try to adapt ourselves in order to cover uh, mostly everything you need to at least to follow QBounds and the QNICAL. But yeah, uh, if you have other specific topics that you want us to cover, just please let us know. All right, so thank you, everyone. Uh, okay, see you again in, uh, let's say, uh, I think half an hour is when the womanium starts. And then see you for the next uh, mentorship session. Thank you.